I spent 200 days in modern Stardew Valley. Please subscribe, follow my Twitch and enjoy the video. After having a solid month long slumber I woke up and headed outside. After being gone for so long I was hoping for some welcome backs from the townsfolk, but all I got was Clint asking me for free stuff. I then decided to make a list of the things I wanted to achieve throughout these next 100 days. Finish the community center, then repair the boat to the Fern Islands. With that out of the way I tended to my animals before grabbing a bunch of stuff in my chests that I could donate to the community center, and donated them. I then had a little chat with the villagers before buying some stuff stuff at the night market and giving the wizard a glob for his birthday. In the morning of day 102, I got a letter from the wizard saying that I had gained his trust and that I should meet him in his tower to teach me some magic. So after patting my goats, I excitedly headed up. When I got there, we talked for a bit and he fed me some suspicious brew before turning his hair pink, gaining me the access to the Shrine of Disillusion. I then rode my horse up to the community center where I donated some pine tar, finishing the crafts room and unlocking the quarry. I then wanted to test out my lava katana, so I went up to the mines and grinded for iron for the rest of the day before heading home, putting my loot away and going to bed. On day 103 I made some cheese before riding up to the quarry on my horse, and since I was too lazy to mine it all by hand, I blew it all up. I then cleared it of trees before giving Marlin a gift for his birthday, who gave me the sewer key in return. I then decided to upgrade my house, so after grabbing a bunch of wood I rode over to Robin's, but she wasn't there, so instead I cleared out my mushroom cave and went to bed. In the morning of day 104, I tended to my animals before heading into town to give Evelyn a diamond for her birthday. I then wanted to use my sewer key, so I went down to the sewers to meet Krobus. At that moment, I remembered the bear who wanted maple syrup in the secret woods, so I grabbed some and headed downwards. After giving it to him, in return he gave me his knowledge and also access to his shop next to the abandoned vineyard, where I bought some produce. On day 105, I donated some of my loot to the community center before heading back to my farm to pat my chickens. I then went over to Gunter's and counted up my donated items, which turned out to be 59, only one off 60, which would unlock the upstairs area of the museum. So I excitedly ran back to my house and picked up some geodes and broke them at Clint's. Out of all of my geodes that I had stored up, none of them contained new items. Very sad. I then went home wondering how I could get one more donatable item. In the morning of day 106, I tended to my animals before deciding to do some journal quests. So I grabbed some items and rode into town. After giving them all away, I collected my money and headed home. I was checking my resource chest when I realized that I literally had no hardwood, so I went down to the secret woods to clear it out. I then put my animal products in the shipping bin before heading to bed. On day 107, I decided that I had enough money to complete the vault room in the community center, so after tending to my animals, I rode into town. I bought all of the packages, and after grabbing my rewards, I headed down to the beach to fish for the rest of the day. After giving a squid to Willy for a quest, I headed home and put my fish in the shipping container, then went to bed. On day 108, the bus was finished its repair, so I excitedly ran over to the bus stop and waited for Pam to walk over. I then bought a ticket and drove over. The first thing I did when I arrived was explore a little, so after walking down for a very long time, I found the three pillars and also the dragon skeleton, as well as the oasis. After trying to get past the bouncer, I decided to go down to the skull cavern, and after only being down there for a minute, I got my very first prismatic shard, which I was very happy about. I then spent the rest of the day grinding there before for taking the bus home. Day 109 was the Feast of the Winter Star, so I grabbed my gold bar for Maru and headed into town. After chatting with a bunch of people there, I gave my gift. I then got a pink cake from Harvey, which I was pleasantly surprised at. With nothing else to do, I just went home and went to bed. On day 110, after patting my chickens and harvesting my cranberries, I headed down to the desert with the goal of reaching level 25 of the Skull Caverns. So with my bombs on hand, I descended, and by 9 o'clock I had done it. I had reached level 25, so I went home and went to bed excitedly awaiting my prize from Mr. Key the next morning. 
In the morning of day 111, I patted my cows, then went down and gave Sophia a present for her birthday, before finally donating my 60th item to the museum. Happy with my success, I decided to dedicate the rest of the day to fishing. I fished in the ocean, then I fished in the river flowing through the town, before finally fishing in Cindersap Forest. I threw all of my catch in the shipping bin, then went off to bed. On day 112, I was met at my door by Gunter, who said that I would receive money in the mail soon, which was cool. I then rode into town to say hello to him in his museum before riding down to the beach and buying an iridium rod and some tackle. Using my new gear, I fished in the mountain lake for the rest of the day before donating some fish to the community center and heading home in anticipation of the incoming spring. Day 113 was the first day of spring, so I went outside excitedly to buy some crops. I entered town when I was rudely interrupted by Lewis giving me his overgrown land. I accepted it, then ran into Pierre's, where I bought 144 garlic seeds, which took me until 1.40 a.m. to finish planting. After nearly getting knocked out, I went to bed dreaming of the profits that I would make. In the morning of day 114, I decided to finally get my galaxy sword using the prismatic shard that I'd got a while back, so I grabbed it and bought a ticket to the desert. After getting my sword, I realized that spending 25 grand at the end of 100 days was just a complete waste. I only used my lava katana for like 14 days. I then descended back into the skull cavern where I spent the rest of my day grinding before taking the bus home. On day 115, I tended to my animals before going down to Marnie's to buy an auto grabber. After placing it down in my barn, I bought another ticket to the desert and hopped on the bus. When I arrived, I went straight down to the Skull Caverns. After lots of grinding and getting a cowboy hat, I nearly made it to level 50, but couldn't because time. I then took the bus home and went off to bed. In the morning of day 116, I checked my calendar and it was Kent's birthday and I knew he loved roasted hazelnuts so I decided to dedicate the day to getting him some. Sadly, when I checked through my chests, I only had one hazelnut so I went over to the bear's shop and bought three for the dish. I then returned home to cook them when I realised that I hadn't unlocked the recipe yet and then spent the rest of the day depressingly chopping hardwood. On day 117, I decided to prepare myself for a long grind in the Skull Caverns, so after harvesting my garlic and tending to my animals, I got preparing. First, I cooked a bunch of food to keep my health and energy up, then I went over to Clint's to order an upgrade for my pickaxe, and finally I spent the rest of the day giving gifts to the townsfolk in the saloon. In the morning of day 118, I patted my chickens before grabbing a couple of things to donate to the community center. I then rode down to the area that Lewis had given me and cleared it of everything but stones because I didn't have a pickaxe. I then went over to the saloon where I gave a bunch of people beers, then went back home and went to bed. On day 119, my gold pickaxe was ready, so I picked it up, did a bit more shopping, and headed straight down to the Skull Caverns. While I was down there, I got a letter saying that someone was waiting for me at level 100 of the Skull Caverns, and I knew what I had to do. I got grinding. And finally, on day 134, after days and days of grinding, I was ready to get to level 100. I took a warp totem straight there. It ended up not being that hard with staircases, so I did make it to Mr. King. He gave me his milk, and after drinking it, I continued on my journey downwards. By the end of the day, I warp totemed out with all of my beautiful iridium and fell asleep on my farm. In the morning of day 135, I harvested my parsnips and patted my chickens before heading over to my greenhouse and grabbing all of my ripe cranberries. I then donated my parsnips to the community center before riding back to my farm and crafting a bunch of new furnaces, which I placed down and started to smelt some iridium. I then cleared out my mineral cave before heading back to my cottage. Day 136 was the flower dance, so after tending to my animals, I rode down to the forest. I asked around, and this time someone actually wanted to dance with me. This is rare, believe me. I then got teleported home, and with nothing else to do, I just went to bed. In the morning of day 137, I harvested all of my strawberries before heading up to Marnie's and buying four ducks, which I named this, 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 and this. I then went over to the community center where I donated an egg, then rode down to the beach and collected all the forageables scattered around. After that, I made a quick delivery to Kent before heading back to my farm. On day 138, I padded my ducks before grabbing my gold bars and heading to Clint's to get my axe upgraded. After ordering it, I bought some ingredients from Pierre and went back to my farm to do some cooking. I made a fried egg and a maki roll, which I donated to the community center. I then went home, checked on my fruit trees, then went to bed. 
In the morning of day 139, I put some iron in my furnaces before riding down to tend to my animals. And I then went up to the community center where I donated 10 hay. I then rode down into the town to give Emily an amethyst for her birthday, then ordering a deluxe barn from Robin. I then fished for the remainder of the day before riding back up and going to bed. On day 140, I realized just how much hay was growing on my farm, so I decided to cut it all up. So I took the minecart straight to the quarry to get my golden scythe. It wasn't very difficult with my overpowered weapons. I then blew up the quarry because I'm too lazy to clean it out by hand. After that, I went back to my farm where I spent the rest of the day chopping the grass on my farm, then throwing some cheese in the shipping bin and heading to bed, dreaming about the incoming summer. Day 141 was the first day of summer, so I cleared out my old crops before running straight over to Bier's to buy some seeds. I then spent the rest of the entire day hoeing the ground, placing sprinklers, and planting seeds. I then went to bed past midnight after placing down my last scarecrow. Day 142 was the day that my ducks were fully grown, so I crafted four more mayonnaise machines. After placing them, I repaired the fences, then went over to my greenhouse where I picked all of my cranberries. I then rode over to the community center where I donated my duck egg, completing the bundle and getting a cheese press. After cleaning out the mineral cave in my farm quarry, I just went to bed. I woke up on day 143 to a letter from Kent containing an extremely dangerous explosive. After safely putting it away, I grabbed a bunch of stuff to sell to Willy and rode down to the beach. After selling them, I got to work trying to catch a puffer fish, and after a very, very, very long fight, I finally caught it. I donated it to the community center, and happy with my success, I went to bed. On day 144, I woke up and tended to my animals before going down to Pierre's to buy a red cabbage seed and a sunflower seed for the community center. After planting them both, I collected my copper bars and rode down to Marnie's to purchase some pigs, which I named Stonky, Pog, Plop, and Clump. I then went down to my farm and I was just riding around when I found an owl statue. Someone in my other video said that it was rare, so I was pretty excited. I placed it down near my house, then pretended to be a cowboy with Sophia for the remainder of the day. In the morning of day 145, I wanted to get a house upgrade, but to do that I needed a bunch of hardwood which I didn't have. So I got straight to work chopping all of the hardwood that I could find and I didn't stop until I had enough. And finally, on day 153, when I woke up, my house was upgraded and it looked great. After exploring it for a while, I went outside to harvest my melons. I then sold the bulk of them before riding up to the community center and completing the cellar, unlocking the greenhouse. I also finished a different bundle on the bulletin board. I then decided to ride down to the beach to collect forageables, and while I was there, I purchased a mermaid's pendant from the old marina. I then went home and went off to bed. Day 154 was a very special day. It was a special day because it was the day that Dave would propose to Sophia. So after looking for her for the entire day, I finally found her and proposed. She said yes, surprisingly, and I went home happy with my success. On day 155, I went outside and patted my chickens before collecting all of my battery packs. I then grabbed some truffles and threw them in my shipping bin before riding over to my shed to check on my crops. I then donated a truffle to the community center before clearing out the secret woods for the rest of the day, then heading home. In the morning of day 156, I harvested my tomatoes and petted my animals before heading over to Pierre's and finishing the quality crops special order. I then rode down to the beach where I bought some bait and tackle and fished there for the rest of the day before going over to Susan's to give her a puffer fish. I then headed back home and went to bed. Day 157 was Dave and Sophia's wedding day. A great milestone in my journey through Stardew Valley. After the ceremony ended, I chatted with Sophia a little before tending to my animals and checking on my greenhouse. I then gave a coconut to Linus before eating a pizza outside Sam's room because he refused to leave it. I then rode back to my farm on my horse. In the morning of day 158, I was met at the door by Evelyn who gave me a pot. I then noticed that my blueberries were ready for harvest, so I grabbed them all. I then gave my animals a quick pat before heading over to my greenhouse where I found six fully grown fruit trees. I grabbed the fruits, then went into town where I donated my pomegranate. I then spent the rest of the day in the cave trying to complete my monster eradication goals.
On day 159, I gave Sophia some Grampleton orange chicken, then put away the loot I had gathered the previous day before heading down and picking some truffles. I then rode up to Robbins where I purchased a house upgrade for only 100,000 gold. Pretty cheap. After collecting all of my cranberries in the greenhouse and turning some fruit into jam, I rode to the secret woods where I cleared it out for the rest of the day. In the morning of day 160, I found Robin outside working on my house. I harvested all of my tomatoes, then quickly tended to my animals because today was an exciting day. It was exciting because I could finally finish the bulletin board in the community center. After donating my apples, I realized that I only needed one more item to finish the entire community center, a walleye. Happy with my progress, I went to bed. On day 161, I realized that I would need to wait all the way until fall to collect my walleye, so I wanted to get there quick. So I started the monster eradication grind. I would go to the mines every day until the first to fall to fight monsters and get rewards. So I got fighting. And on day 186, after a long day in the mines, I watched the moonlight jellies from the pier. It was the end of summer, and when I went to bed, I dreamt of all the places I would go during the incoming fall. Day 169 was the first day of fall, so I went straight over to Pierre's to buy some fall seeds. After planting them all, I realized that I'd need a rainy day to catch my walleye, so I rode over to the bear's shop to purchase some pine tar for a rain totem. I didn't look at the time and ended up being knocked out. On day 170, I said hello to Sophia before making some truffle oil and cleaning out my greenhouse, then heading downwards to the secret woods. After chopping all of the hardwood there, I headed down and chopped all the hardwood on my farm before riding into town to give Penny an emerald for her birthday. I then returned home and went to bed. In the morning of day 171, I headed outside to be greeted by rain. I was happy that my rain totem had worked. So I excitedly tended to my animals before riding straight down to the forest pond. After fishing there for the entire day, I eventually caught a walleye at midnight. I then cleared out the secret woods before returning to my farm. Day 172 was a special day. It was a special day because it was the day I could finally finish the community center. I walked in through the door and had a look around for one last time before donating my walleye. The Junimos jumped up and down saying goodbye then disappeared. I walked outside and in celebration decided to spend the rest of the day blowing up trees. Day 173 was the day that the community center was officially open. I walked into town to everyone celebrating outside the community center. After seeing everyone was there, Pierre knocked Morris out of the community center and he was never seen again, even though he's still a giftable NPC. I then rode home with my hero trophy, proudly placing it down next to my bed. In the morning of day 174, I was greeted in the mail by Willie, saying that I should go and meet him behind his shop, so I headed over. After a quick cutscene, I was introduced to the boat, then I was told that I could repair it with certain resources. After taking a look around, I realized that the only thing I didn't have was hardwood, so I rushed home and blew up more of my farm. I ended up getting quite a lot of hardwood, but not quite enough. So when day 175 came around, I was determined to get the 200 hardwood. I quickly made some cheese before heading straight down to the secret woods. I cleared it out before heading back down to my own farm and clearing the hardwood area there out as well. I then spent the rest of the day blowing up trees on my farm to uncover hardwood, which eventually got me to the needed 200. Excitedly, I grabbed everything I needed and rode down to Willie's, and it was locked. <sighs> When day 176 came around, I knew exactly what to do. I hopped on my horse and rode straight over to Willie's and gave all of my resources to the boat. I then rode over to the abandoned Jojomart where I donated my prismatic shard. I then went up to the train station where I got a cutscene with the wizard who asked me to get his ink. So I went down to the sewers to collect the dark talisman which would grant me access to the witch's swamp where the ink was kept. I killed all the bugs and grabbed the talisman before heading back to my farm and going to bed. Day 177 was a brilliant day. I left my house, then straight away rode to Willie's to sail to Ginger Island. After purchasing a ticket, I was taken to the island. I met a mysterious boy and his parrot who took my walnut. I then followed a floating fireball which took me to a lava area filled with dangerous enemies. After fighting them off, I realized that I didn't have any food, so I left the area. I also found two golden walnuts through a little entrance. I then hopped back on the boat to Pelican Town and returned home. That night, my child was born, who I named Bama after a long time subscriber.
On day 178, I once again went straight out to Ginger Island with the goal of getting 10 golden walnuts. I ran over to the volcano and once again fought off monsters, but this time I came prepared with mushrooms to eat. After a long day of killing monsters and getting items that I didn't know the use of, I totemed home with my recently obtained 10 golden walnuts and fell asleep right next to my bed. In the morning of day 179, I gave Jody a diamond for her birthday before riding straight down to Willy's to hop on the boat. I then gave the parrot 10 golden walnuts and it called its friends to peck a sleeping turtle away. Beyond it, I discovered a whole new farm area with a sleeping shack for only 20 golden walnuts. So I went straight to the volcano to collect some walnuts. Eventually, I made it to level 5 where I met a dwarf and a parrot saying that he would give me an exit for 5 walnuts. I thought he would work like an elevator so I could come back to level 5 whenever, but I just got teleported outside the volcano. What a waste. On day 180, I once again took the ship to Ginger Island, and this time I went straight to the volcano, wasting no time at all. I ran through the entire thing and eventually got to the top at nearly midnight where I was met by a mysterious man. He told me about the forge, then teleported away. After having a good look around, I collected my walnuts and a prismatic shard and took a warp totem home. I then went to bed. In the morning of day 181, now that I had unlocked Ginger Island, I wanted to unlock both the area past the bridge and the island farmhouse, so I decided to dedicate some days to only grinding for golden walnuts. So I warped over to the island and got grinding. And finally on day 186 I went home and went to bed on Ginger Island. In the morning of day 187, I woke up on Ginger Island. After clearing the area for a little, I took a warp totem home and tended to my animals, before heading into town to give Kent a photo of a soldier given to me by an old woman back on Ginger Island. In return, Kent gave me some tomato sauce, which I gave to Gus. He then gave me a Stardew Valley Rose, which I spent the rest of the day trying to figure out who to give to. I then realized that it must be Sandy, thanks to Emily's hint, but I was too late to catch the bus, so I just went to bed. So, on day 188, I went straight to the bus and took it to the desert. I gave Sandy the flower in return, she gave me an advanced TV remote, which I thought must be for Pam. It wasn't, so I thought it must be for Sebastian, but I stood outside his room for literally the entire day, and he never left. So I gave up and went down to George, who turned out to be the right person. He gave me a blue rock, which I thought must be for Clint. It wasn't, so instead I rode over to the wizard, who gave me a worm in return. With my brand new worm, I returned home. In the morning of day 189, I gave my worm to Willy, who gave me the pirate's keep safe in return. So I hopped straight into the boat and went to Ginger Island. I fished there for a while before remembering that I came to give the pirate thing to the woman, so I walked over and gave it to her. She gave me the recipe to fairy dust in return, as well as five golden walnuts, which I used to repair the bridge. I then spent the rest of the day clearing the area out and ignoring the shouts of the person behind the stone wall. On day 190, I went straight over to the volcano since I needed a bomb to save the man in the cave. After buying some, I went back to the man and put two bombs down. But after one exploded, it started a cutscene, meaning that there was one primed explosive about to blast under this dude's feet the entire time. Nice. I then talked to him and gave him a skeletal foot before taking the boat back home and going to bed. I spent the entirety of day 191 collecting golden walnuts on Ginger Island, and by the end of the day I had a solid 15 or so which I planned to save until I could buy the resort on the beach. On day 192, I spent the first half of the day finding the last five golden walnuts to unlock the resort, then unlocking it. It appeared in a flash and I was confused what it did because it didn't seem to do anything. I then noticed that the debris had cleared on the east side of the beach, so I followed it across and found a new area. I then found a cave with lots of barrels and a small pier. In the morning of day 193, I tended to my animals on my farm before taking the boat to Ginger Island. There, I found a bunch of people at the resort who I said hello to. I then ran over to the volcano because I wanted a hundred cinder shards to buy a pair of shoes. But after a long day in the volcano, I didn't see the time and ended up falling asleep inside of Professor Snail's home. On day 194, I wanted to plant some pineapple trees on my island farm, but I didn't have any sprinklers, so first thing in the morning, I took the boat back to the mainland. After quickly feeding my chickens, I picked up some sprinklers and headed back to Ginger Island. There, I planted my taro roots and my pineapple seeds before heading off to bed. 
Day 195 was Spirit's Eve, so after doing some things on Ginger Island, I took the ship back home and cleared out my greenhouse before waiting for the festival to begin. When it did, I entered and was amazed how different the maze looked. It was so fun because it actually posed a challenge. But after a while of exploring, I eventually made it to the end, collecting my three golden pumpkins. Happy with my success, I left the festival and went to bed. On day 196, I woke up on my farm, so I tended to my animals before taking the boat straight to Ginger Island. When I got there, I said hello to the people staying at the resort before returning to the pirate's cove that I had found a while back. And to my surprise, it was teeming with pirates. After chatting to a bunch of them, I tried doing some darts and managed to complete the 301 points in 10 throws. I then left the cove before returning to my sleeping shack. In the morning of day 197, I went outside dreading that all of my crops were going to be dead, but when I looked, they were all still alive and it wasn't even white with snow. Ginger Island is just the best. I then decided to spend the rest of the day trying to find golden walnuts so that I could unlock the trader, but after an entire day of searching, I couldn't find the required 10. After getting lost in the dark forest area that I was sure had a golden walnut at the end, I returned home defeated. On day 198, I woke up and planted some mixed seeds before clearing out the farm for a bit, then taking the boat back to Pelican Town. There, I tended to my animals and checked on my very little wine before heading down to the sewers to buy a star drop from Krobus. I then warped back to Ginger Island where I cleared out the artifact area before heading to bed. In the morning of day 199, I spent some time clearing out my farm before once again trying to get a golden walnut in the forest. But after hours of trying to get it, I couldn't. I ended up concluding that the mod had messed it up somehow. I then went and said hello to everyone chilling at the resort before fishing for a bit and heading back to the mainland. When I arrived, I gave my golden coconut to Clint and inside was a golden walnut. With my success, I returned to the island and went over to the pirate's cove hoping to get one more walnut from winning darts. They weren't there, so I just went home. And finally, it was day 200, my 200th day in Stardew Valley. When I left my house, I was determined to get one last golden walnut to unlock the trader. So I tried the secret passage one last time and I somehow did it. With my 10 walnuts secured, I returned to the parrot and bought the hut. After looking through the merchandise, I decided it was a ripoff and spent the rest of the day in the volcano before finally heading off to bed. Thank you all so much for watching until the end. I do appreciate it and if you did enjoy, please subscribe. Bye.